Welcome to the weekly coaches report and a recap from the weekend with Coach Scott Brumfield of the Dixie State football team. Coach Brumfield, take us through uh, this past weekend and your opening game at, at Alamosa. You know, tough, tough week. You know, we had a lot of expectations and a, and a lot of goals coming into the season and, and went up there and, and basically performed as good as, as well as any game that we've ever had over the last couple of years. The disappointing thing is we didn't come out with a victory. We, you know, we dominated this, the stats, um, 400 and, and close to 450 yards of total offense. Our defense held them to about 250, 50 yards rushing. So stat-wise, we were very happy. There's a lot of great things, but the things that really really keep, hurt us bad was two of the, the things we talk about all the, all the time, ball control. Um, you know, we had six turnovers, which absolutely killed us, and then we got to execute in the red zone. You know, that's when we got to be sharp. We got to know our assignments. We got to hold on to the ball, uh, no penalties, and, and we didn't do that, and that cost us the game. You know, oftentimes they, uh, they go to grading, grading your team, uh, grade your offense, uh, grade your defense, grade your special teams. You know, we'll, we'll start out offensively. You know, great numbers. Zach Fox had 10 catches for, for over 100 yards. We had over 100 yards rushing. But the overall grade is, is the bottom line is getting the, the W, and, and our offense didn't play well enough to get us the W. You know, and you factor in the total thing, you know, being in the red zone and executing the red zone is a big part of our goals. So, you know, you'd have to give our, our offense a D or a C. You know, we, we, we cost us the game defensively. I would have to say a B plus or an A minus. They they came out, they performed, they were physical, they flew around to the ball. Still had a lot of mental mistakes. Uh, two of their big plays, you know, which would have really put them down to almost zero rushing yards, came on missed assignments, misalignments, and those are things we can't do going into the GNAC conference uh, schedule. You know, we're going to be going against some very physical, high powered offenses, and and we can't. Not saying take taking nothing away from Adam State, but we can't have those same mental errors. Um, as we enter conference play, but I thought our defense played well enough to win. Special teams is a big uh, concern for us right now with our kicking situation. Um, it really put us in a bind. You know, one of the three uh, things we really stress is is uh, field possession, where we are on the field. You know, our start and, and our special teams didn't give us that. Um, we left us in bad situations, and so it's something we're going to have to really address this week um, in our punting and our kicking. Our PAT, our extra point, all facets of our of our kicking game. There was some great effort on special teams. We had great coverage, great uh, return blocks. We also gave up a turnover on special teams, which is also crucial. We had a drop punt deep in deep in our own territory on the three yard line. Um, so that's something we gotta gotta address as well. So uh, offensively, uh, some new some new guys on the team. Uh, especially at the quarterback position, it seemed like uh, for the first time in a while you were moving the f the football at will. Uh, at will. Um, uh, running the ball with Camuela Elisa, it looked like he was explosive to start the game. Mm -hmm. um, talk about some of those individual performances on offense. You know, you know, Griff obviously had had a few interceptions, and you know, it's easy to read the newspaper and, and point the finger at the quarterback. There was there was other things that were involved in those in those turnovers. You know, wrong routes. Our receivers played a big part, but pressure. You know, overall, I was, I was happy with Griff. Griff's extremely tough on himself, uh, extreme competitor. He's going to get better and better. He, he'll learn from his mistakes. So you know, obviously, I think he can play better, and he knows he can play better and eliminate some mental mistakes, but. You know, you can't point the finger on all the turnovers of Griff. You know, it's a, it's a team effort, truly 11 guys that, that factor into that. Um, our running running game was outstanding. You know, um, Kamuela and, and A.J. Johnson, A.J. had a big run for a touchdown. Um, we were able to to move the ball, you know, how we wanted to on the ground. And that, that was, you know, one of the, the better running games um, that we've had here over the last couple of years. So that was obviously big for us. Offense line did, did a lot of great things in the run game. Still got to tie up a lot of missed assignments. I was, probably the most disappointing thing on offense was missed assignments with our offensive line. And so we've really challenged them this week to get in their playbook and, and, and study their opponents and know every situation, everything that can go um, happen in a game that, that might affect them one way or the other and, and be sharp this week. Nice. Uh, defensively, um, talk about an outstanding performer of the week. It seemed like uh, they, they seemed to really lock down the Adams State offense. They were able to uh, hold them at bay. Uh, they even prevented a uh, touchdown deep in the red zone after a key turnover that, that uh, 
that, that we had. Uh, talk about defensive performances and maybe your your key defensive performance of the week. You know, overall, I was, I was very happy with our defense. They flew around. You know, we feel like our front seven, we have two deep as good as we've ever had here. So we were able to rotate guys in and out and, and keep them from getting tired in the high elevation. Some of the key performances I thought were Jake Duncan had an outstanding game. You know, he had uh, 13 tackles, two tackles per loss. Um, was flying around there. He's, he's kind of the emotional leader out there. He's a returning starter, one of the few returning starters we have on defense in the front seven. And so I was really happy with our front seven, led by Jake Duncan. Matt Tonavasa, another linebacker, had an outstanding game. But I, I was, our, our overall defensive performance was great. You know, our, our secondary with returning Ray Chapman, Nick Perrazzo, um, Daniel Moffitt, and Cash Morgan, all four of those guys bring back leadership qualities. So you know, I'm, I'm very happy with our defense. We get better. We absolutely can get better. And there were still some mistakes that were made. And, but the potential is there to, to be a very dominant defense. Great. Uh, going into this week, you uh, open your GNAC play. Always tough. You, you normally would like another non-conference game to, to have a warm-up. But uh, here we go with Western Oregon. They, uh, they battled Grand Valley State, uh, who is a nationally ranked team, and, and held with them for three quarters. Um, what do you expect out of Western Oregon coming into St. George? You know, the same thing that we've seen the last six years since we became a Division II school. Western Oregon is always going to be a big physical football team, a well-coached football team. They're going to execute on offense. They're going to be very physical on defense. And, and this conference is a very good football conference. You know, starting the GNAC play, I can't say enough of where this conference has came over the last six years, the caliber of teams that are emerging, you know, the humble states that, you know, not taking anything away from them. But four years ago, that was a win for us. And to see where they've gone in the last four years to be in a, a national contender in the Division II level, but that speaks for the for the whole conference. But Western Oregon, is, you know, is always at the top, competing for the conference title. Like I said, they're well coached. You'll see a big physical team that, that flies around. They very very sound football team. Nice. Uh, as off offensively, what what this week do you have to do? Um, obviously, not have turnovers, Absolutely. but are you going to lean more towards a run game, towards a pass game, or the prototypical, you know, balanced attack? We're trying to be balanced. You know, last game I think we were almost right down the line as far as passes and, and, and our rushing attempts, and that's something we, we've got to be able to do. You know, we can't rely on our passing game. We've got to be able to set up our passing game with our running game and vice versa. So we want to be as balanced as possible. And, and like you said, obviously the, the biggest thing is controlling the ball, not turning it over, um, controlling the time of possessions, and, and obviously the red zone. Our red zone efficiency has got to be uh, a lot a lot better. You know, last year that was one of the areas we were, we were good at. And, you know, I said I'd never mentioned the Jodon, you know, he was so automatic in the red zone for us. Now someone else is going to have to step up and be that guy in the red zone that takes charge and, and, and you know, for, scores touchdowns and, and just leads our team. So I... That's something that's got to be uh, our number one concern is our red zone uh, success. Nice. Well, thanks for taking time with us on the weekly recap report and the upcoming report for Dixie State football kickoff Saturday, 6.05 at Hanson Stadium. Hope to see you out there.